is, look at it, well water. For the root word, pyro, it means to pierce through across the earth, the other side. It means to go to the, matter of fact, it means the people of the word and spirit who are going to be young Pentecost. So we need to get to the point where the word is pushing us. But it won't push you. It won't become piercing if you don't search it. If you don't have a ready mind. I'm telling y'all, you waiting on the service. You waiting on the trouble under the water. We like at the pool of Bethesda. I ain't got no man to put me in. Remember the story? I ain't got nobody. And we're still looking for somebody. Is it you or do I look for another? Yes. <laughs> so we go from church to church to church trying to find that person to put us in the water. When the water gonna be trouble when you have a readiness of mind. When you search it out, you can get it at home. You can get it on Monday. You can get it on Tuesday. You can get it on Thursday. You can get it on Friday. There's no other way for here. All I do is give you the tools. That's it. And I tell you, this is the way walk ye in it. Now look at Luke 6. I'm about to close. Thank you guys for putting up with me. Luke 6 said, uh, Luke 6 and 46. Let's look at something Jesus said. You heard from me a lot. Let's see what he said about the word. Maybe you believe it. Anybody gonna believe it if it's in red? I mean, uh, your faith go to a whole other measure when you read it in red. You'd be like, you'd be like, chest all out there. That's Jesus speaking. No, 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 no. All scripture is proper. Not just the things that came out of his work, of his mouth, but even the black, even the like in my Bible, the ones that's bleed with ink. Luke <laughs> said, "And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do what? Not the things which I say. That's bottom line. That's cut and dry." Folks say, "Well, he's my Lord. Now he made you a savior. He gonna show you how to be, so how he can be your Lord." The next few verses, but that he's not knowing to say, you can't tell me. Well, well, well yeah, I can. <laughs> if you walk in disobedience, if your mind matters over what God has said, then you, you he ain't Lord. That's the process of elimination. He said, look, if I tell you to do something and you do it, then I'm your Lord. Mm -hmm. That's my prayer for you. Huh? If I tell you to do something to do, if I tell you what to do and you don't do it, then I'm not Lord. Amen. He said, in that day, many going to come and say, I prophesied, I cast out devils, I did a whole bunch of stuff on your behalf, Jesus. He said, get away from me. I never knew you. He called them workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the word iniquity is not a bad thing. It means you have no law. Which means you have no boundaries. You have no guidelines. Or what we like to call them, you have no core values. Oh, glory. It'll make me happy. 47. <laughs> Whosoever cometh to me and heareth what? My saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Mm -hmm. Now his saying, because we got the luxury of having not only his his just a compilation of his word, but we can also say we can hear his voice as well. So that's why it's a two-edged sword. What's written and what's spoken. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we need preaching and teaching. Because it projects to us or relates to us the wisdom of God. It says, here is my saying, and doing them, I'm going to show you to whom he is like. Next verse. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep. Somebody say dig deep. We're going to stop on this point. But I'm going to come go all the way through. But somewhere in your blessed Bible, your artifact, your archive, go ahead and underline dig deep. He said, he is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on what? Oh, wow. On a rock. You think he was talking about a rock? He said, lay the foundation on a rock. In, in your, even in my mind, I'm analyzing that. I'm like, well, lay the foundation on a rock. A rock is not perfect. A brick is level. Mm -hmm. A rock going to have its edges on it. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So it may be like a Peter Tower. Okay, that's, it. that's the way I think. So it has to be something else he meant when he said build the foundation upon the rock. Right? The rock is the revelation. Matthew 16, he told him that upon 
this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. What is the rock? The revelation that he is the Christ. That's why we need spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, right? He said if we lay the foundation on a rock, and when the flood rose, the stream beat be, uh, vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Whoa! Natural circumstances, everyday stuff. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But couldn't subvert the structure. The core values that came out of his sins was able to withstand the elements. Come on, help me out, y'all. Am I right? Yeah. He said it came hard against it. But because the foundation standing sure. No matter what is formed against me, it will not prosper. Why? Because I build it on the rock, the revelation. I build it on the scriptures. I build it on his saying. I value what Jesus is saying. His voice is the predominant voice in our marriage. Say it again. <laughs> His voice is the predominant voice in our marriage. And as she follow him, I follow him. There is a harmony, a, a peace, a, a unity. You know that that even though when the winds and the flood and the rains come, we can withstand anything because we took time to build it upon the rock. Amen. Amen. You gotta be able to build. See, we're not building for our own pleasure. That's why I told y'all a couple of uh, last Sunday. I say most folks get married for three for two things. Procreation and pleasure. You don't get it, uh, thank God for procreation, having kids and all that, you know, other stuff goes with it. And having pleasure, you know, that, that, that's nice too, but it ain't the only thing. There's another piece. Amen. Purpose. We got together for purpose. So we got together and we tune into what he is saying to us. Purpose is automatic. On paper, procreation and pleasure is automatic. But you have to be intentional to find purpose. And you have to make sure the foundation is built upon the rock. Tell your neighbor, the rock. rock. Got to be built upon the rock. He said in verse what? Uh, 49. But he that hear that do it not. It's like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat. I'm going to skip that word. And immediately it fell. Wait a minute. I, I, I just got that pause in here. <laughs> and it immediately fell. And the ruin of the house was what? Great. The house was great. The purpose was great. The expectation, the prophetic ministry was great. The assignment was great. But it wasn't built correctly. So what happens to every human came against that house. Mm -hmm. Every situation you could come up with came against the house. But because we didn't place value on the core values, because we didn't have principles in place, because we weren't intimate with God, because we didn't have a readiness of mind, because we didn't search the scriptures daily, then when the things came up against us, we want to bind the devil when we didn't feel correctly. Mm -hmm. We want to go against the devil or go against one another. No, we need to get together in our collective juices and say, hey, what, what is it that, where's the missing link? Because trials and temptations and life itself will prognosticate to you. Mm -hmm. It will tell you what's missing. Mm -hmm. But what we do too many times, we're trying to find out why it's missing. Yeah. And, it's, and then we won't have no accountability, so we want to put it on the next person. Well, if you had her, I wouldn't have. Uh, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, we do that with passes too. We do that all day. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. But you gotta build it correctly. Now I told you I'm gonna close on this word here. It's dug deep. See, most saints are, are surface. They don't dig deep. Digging deep is what? Coming to church? Hey. Mm -hmm. Joining the church? Hey. Yeah, I don't believe it. That was drawing join churches. Witches come to join churches. Yeah. I know y'all don't believe it. I've seen witches in church. I've seen witches come to our church. Some of us did. But they not. We got a little witchcraft. Come on now. Talk to them. Rebellion is in the witchcraft. Come on now. Y'all got witches in there. Got witches in there. Whatever you rebel against God. Stubborn is a sin and not adultery. Rebellion is a sin. Uh, come on now. That's what first, uh, first uh, Samuel 15, 23 says. Come on now. Y'all ain't got to So they were. So we, we ain't, you know, just coming to church and just saying I had a good time. It's not deep. It's not deep. Just be able to pontificate, expound, and, and, you know. But see, this is what the word dug deep. Is what it means. It means this is what the Greek means. The Greek meaning of the word deep. Because I get accused of that sometimes. I have folks, some of your family members say, "Y'all too deep over there." Anybody ever heard that before? Yeah. Which they basically saying, "Y'all think too much." Well, I'd rather have a, I'd rather be a thinker than a shouter. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather find out why. I'm shouting. Yeah, for real. Man, it just be shouting. It's like somebody seeing somebody run from a, a one direction and just start running. I don't even know why you're running. No, no, I want to find out why you're running. I'm running with you, but I'm going to go, why you running? What's going on? <laughs> well, we got some more. And I've been accused of that. We deep. I, don't mean, I used to be kind of like, I had a complex. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm like, man. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> it ain't that I'm deep, you just shallow. Yeah. Yeah. Because according to this, Jesus said, dug deep. Mm -hmm. So I'm in good company. Because yeah. this is what your strong says about mm -hmm. being deep. Deep, extreme poverty. The deep things of God. Things hidden and above man's scrutiny. Especially Ooh. divine counsel. So when you say, it's more than me style. Yeah, I, 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 they ain't what it said, brother preacher. But, 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 when you start dissecting and going to definitions, you'll find out it's okay to be deep. That's right. But if you're going to be deep, be understandable. Yeah. Or intelligible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't be deep for the sake of being deep. So even in my deepness, <laughs> I have a, it's a method to my madness. I want to bring you to a place that you can lay a foundation. And, I'm, and I believe in it. I believe knowledge is power. I know people are twisting to say other things, but I know that when knowledge comes to you and all of a sudden the light dawns upon you, I, it's an opportunity for you to get into some freedom, for you to break some old patterns. So some cynical, psycho things that have been in your life will be eradicated. So we need light. He said the interest of my word gives light. We need light in a dark place. We need light to shine in us. We need light, not just light for sake of revelation. We need understanding. Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus that they will be that the eyes of their understanding will be open. That's an apostolic prayer. I pray for this house that our eyes will be open. Remember, uh, David said that open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. And the word open means bringing your eyes out of exile. The church eyes have been in exile. What is it? Babylon, what is that? Religion, tradition, denominationalism. We can't see correctly. That's why he said you got to purchase ISAB. You got to say, I place value on what I need to know. I place value on the words that come from your mouth. I want to be healed. He said, that's one of the ministries, right? The Spirit of the Lord was upon him for the recovery of sight of the blind. It ain't just blind. That's what he's talking about, spiritual blindness. We ain't supposed to be without, without understanding. It has to do with vision. We should have vision and purpose. So the scriptures is not just some humdrum cycle of what we do to try to be safe. It's building us. It's putting something in the earth. It's an ark of safety. 
for generations. Yeah. We build it not for our own conception. Yeah. We build it because we have grandbabies. Amen. And so when we're out, when we're in and our great grandbabies and the great great grandbabies, and we ain't seen them yet, but we're gonna build something that will endure Go time. Ahead. So there are no grandpa and them, the grandma and them built a house. Oh, yeah. And they're talking about the stuff that we look at, the uh, brick and mortar. I'm talking about something that is tangible. Something because you can't take brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about something, the wisdom of God that go on the inside of you. I'm living. I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm a byproduct of James Cohill. Come on. I'm a product of that man. All the money, way he handled finances and all the stuff he used to share with me, and I used to ask questions. I am. I, I can look in the mirror and I can see him sometimes. And he's been dead since 96. But he sold something in my life and I'm still taking that legacy. Yes. That's what LOL is. Legacy outlives you. Yeah. That's living out loud. When your legacy can outlive you. That's what living out loud. You sit around here and say this and that about yourself or whatever. But I'm here to tell you. God wants us to be deep. He wants us to launch out. He wants us to get away from the shore. He told us that, I swore all night, he said, nevertheless, at your word, they, they launched out. They launched out to the deep. The same purpose in the same family. He wants us to launch out. So when your friends are trying to listen to our videos on Facebook, don't, don't let them shipwreck your faith. Tell